guys? Welcome back to the vlog. This is episode 15 and we're gonna cover a session that I played last night at the bike. It was a Monday night so my expectation for game quality wasn't very high and I wasn't really surprised. It was not a super good game so it's gonna be hard to squeak out a win. Let's see if we can make it happen. Playing 2-3 no limit in for 300. Let's go over some hands. All right, so within the first orbit, I get involved in a somewhat weird spot. The straddle is on, so everyone's stack size is effectively cut in half. There's one limp under the gun, and I look down at Jack Nine of Diamonds from late position. Being that the straddle is on, I make it $30 to go. Folds back to the straddler who thinks for a while and calls, and the under the gun limper calls as well. So we're going three ways in position to a flop of nine, six, three rainbow with one diamond. The straddler checks, the under the gun player checks, and I decide to put out a continuation bet. We have top pair, somewhat decent kicker, but our hand doesn't do too well if we give up a free turn card. So not always expecting to get called by worse, but mostly betting for protection here, and I'm happy to just take down the pot uncontested on the flop. I put out a C bet of 50 bucks. The straddler, to my surprise, puts in a check raise and he makes it 180. The under the gun player folds and the action's back on us. So it doesn't make too much sense to me because the board's so dry, check raising a set doesn't make any sense. And all the over pairs available to this board, I would expect to put in a three bet pre-flop. I'm not really sure what he's representing in this case, aside from possible straight draws like eight, seven or five, six that are open-ended. I think those possibly could be a check raise bluff in this spot. I think about it for a while and being that we effectively started the hand with 50 big blinds and this check race doesn't really make any sense to me, I decide I'm just going with the hand and I'm not looking to fold top pair on such a weird spot. So after some deliberation, I decide to rip the rest of the money in, which at this point was only 60 or $70 for him to call. He starts thinking for a long time, asking me what I have. And at this point, I think we actually have the best hand and the read was on point with an open-ended straight draw. But after a while, he makes a call and shows pocket tens. So I'm not sure what the straddler was thinking about there for so long. We can't get lucky on the turn and river. So right off the bat in the first orbit, we're down a buy-in. Not really how I was looking to start my session here at the bike. We reload for a second bullet and we got some work to do. In the second hand, the straddle is on, there's three lamps, and I look down at pocket jacks from the big blind. I decide to make it $45 to go. Everyone folds except for the cutoff, who is the same player from the previous hand with the pocket tens. So we go heads up to a flop, which comes king, 10, seven with two clubs. I could go either way here, but against this player who is capable of continuing with a lot of worse hands, I decide to put in a bet for equity denial and also value. Sure, sometimes you'll have a king, but there's still a lot of hands we can get value from. So I continue for 40 bucks. He makes the call fairly quickly. The turn is the ace of diamonds. I make it $90 to go. He thinks about it for a little bit and decides to let it go. So glad to get that one through. Not sure if he folded a king or not, but regardless, we're taking this pot down. So our opponent from the last two hands was the main attraction at this table. And I think this hand does a good example of explaining what I mean. He opens to 17 bucks off of a $900 stack. There's a call to my right from a solid player who had just sat down with 300. And I look down at ace king of hearts on the button. Definitely gonna put in a three bet here. And because the aforementioned player is fairly sticky, I decide to go on the bigger side. I make it $75 to go. He doesn't think for too long and puts in the call and the player on my right who was on the cutoff also makes the call. So three ways to a fairly big pot already, which does not come too good. It's Jack nine, eight with two spades and one diamond. Pretty horrible flop for ace king. And when they check it over to me, I think it would just be burning money to put in a bet here. So I'm pretty much done with the hand. I check it back 
and the turn is another eight. This time the under the gun player puts out a bet of 75 bucks. The player on my right makes the call and I make the easy fold. The river brings a brick, but it's the third diamond. This time the under the gun player checks and the player on my right checks and shows pocket tens. The under the gun player shows queen eight. So he opened with a pretty big sizing under the gun, faces a call and a three bet and decides to make the call with queen eight out of position. Um, I don't recommend that. Don't, just don't do that guys. In the next hand, there's a middle position open to 10 bucks. He's a pretty solid player who says he watches these vlogs. He has around 200 bucks, everyone folds, and I look down at pocket aces in the big blind. I decide to make it $40. He thinks for a little bit and makes the call, so heads up to a flop of queen, queen, eight with no flush draw. I decide to check and he checks back. The turn's a brick and I think now it's time to go for value. There's still a lot of possible straight draws and middling pocket pairs that might continue. I put out a bet of 30 bucks. He doesn't think for too long and lets it go. So not a lot of love for the pocket aces that time, but happy to take it down. Let's see if we could keep the momentum going. In the next hand, an early position player opens to $15 from a $400 stack. I look down at 10-7 of diamonds in late position and I think this is the bottom of my calling range, but the early position player had been playing fairly straightforward, so I'm sure he's either got over pairs or two big broadways. So I think it's gonna be easy to navigate in position. I put in the call and the button, who had been losing quite a lot, also makes the call from a $300 stack. So three ways to a flop here, which comes 10, nine, four, rainbow. Under the gun player checks, and I think it's time to put in a bet, not necessarily expecting to have the best hand every time, but don't want to give a free turn card with such a vulnerable top pair. So I put out a bet of $25. The button makes the call and the under the gun player folds. So heads up to a turn here, which is a three of spades, bringing in a backdoor flush draw. I decide to continue for $60. The button doesn't think for too long and makes the call. So at this point, I'm putting him on a range of hands, including queen jack, King Jack, King Queen. There's a lot of two overs plus straight draws he could have, pair plus straight draws. Not necessarily thinking I'm behind in this spot, but I do think we're gonna need to dodge a few cards on the river. So heads up to a river here, which is the three of diamonds. Pretty good looking card, reduces the combinations of pocket threes if he was somehow slow playing that hand. If he has a weak holding, I don't think he's calling three streets. So I think the best course of action here is to just check and see if he wants to bluff with all the available missed draws that I put this player on. Sure enough, he decides to instantly go all in for 190 bucks. Pretty big bet given the pot size. So I'm not expecting to be ahead all the time, but with so many available missed draws, as I mentioned, and the fact that we have pretty good showdown value with top pair, I decided to make the call and sure enough, he says good call and announces king high. So. Nice to read the situation correctly there, and we pick up a pretty big pot with good old 10-7 suited. Next, it's time for ace-king under the gun. I make it $15 to go. Solid player on the button makes the call with around $250 behind, and everyone else folds. So we're going heads up out of position to a flop of ace-queen-9 with two hearts. I decided to put in a continuation bet of $20. He thinks for a second and makes the call. So off to a turn, which is another nine, bringing in a second flush draw. I think it's a really good card to continue on. So I put in a bet of $50. Once again, he thinks for a little bit and makes the call. So still heads up to this river, which comes the 10 of diamonds. I think about it for a while. And I think in this spot, you can go one of two ways. I decided to just bet and target hands. I can still get some thin value from like ace jack or a lot of queens so although i expect to be behind some percentage of the time i just had to continue and put out a bet of 75 dollars he thinks it over for a while eventually decides on a fold so still a decent sized pot here for this 2-3 game happy it's going our way let's see if we can keep it going
All right, so this last hand is probably the hand of the session. We're shorthanded at this point, I think just five or six players. So when I get dealt King-10 offsuit in late position, I think it's okay to open this up. So I make it $15 to go. The small blind, a woman who just sat down with 300 bucks, makes the call and the big blind, a fairly loose, aggressive player with also a 300 or $400 stack also makes the call. I cover both of these players at this point. So bearing that in mind, as we go to a flop of ace, queen, jack, rainbow, I'd say that's on the better side of flops for sure. They both check it over to me. And I think you can go either way here with a check or a bet. I think when flopping Broadway, it's always better to bet because your opponents could have a lot of pair and straight draws, two pair combinations that you could get a lot of value from. But in this particular instance, I decided to check and see what develops on the turn. So still three ways to a turn, which is the five of hearts, bringing in a heart draw. The small blind leads out for $30 and the big blind pretty much insta calls. Action's on me and I think now it's time to spring the trap with straight draws and flush draws available now. So I make it $100 to go. She thinks for a while and folds, but the big blind once again makes the call. So heads up to a river and I'm just hoping for a clean river. Low doesn't pair the board and not a heart. It's exactly what we get on the seven of diamonds. He checks it over to us. And at this point, I think he has around $200 left in his stack. Um, it should say right there once I check my notes, but it was such that I think the only logical move was to just ship it in and hope that he has a hand he can pay off with. So that's what I decided to do. He makes the snap call after we jam. I obviously show right away and he folds claiming that he had a set of jacks, which I don't know, I find it a little hard to believe. This player type in particular, I'm pretty sure with three bet this pre-flop, especially out of position shorthanded, but regardless, doesn't really matter because we scoop a pretty big pot to finish off the session. All right, so that wrapped up the session for us. Started off a little bit rough with the Jack Nine and Diamonds hand, but managed to turn around and find some run good. We get into the game for 600 and out for 1276 in around six hours. Pretty good result, especially considering that we got stacked in our first orbit. Happy to book a win and keep this heater alive that's been developing through the last couple of weeks. Anyway, that wraps up this episode. Thank you guys for watching as always. Thank you for the support. For those of you who leave comments and like the video, I really appreciate that. It helps the channel grow. All right, so that's a wrap for this one. Good luck out there, and I'll see you guys at the tables. Peace.